Hi, my name is Kevin Jones, and in this walkthrough, I'll show you how to install the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as an identity provider. In the previous walkthrough, I showed how in the service provider, when we tried to log in, we were redirected to this page. And from here, when we entered our details, we were redirected back to the service provider. So this page is provided by the identity provider. And here we see how to write that identity provider. So we will install the provider inside Identity Server 4. So the first thing I need to do is to create an Identity Server 4 project. And to do that, I'm going to use the Identity Server 4 templates. So if you don't have these, you can download and install them. And to do that, you run .NET new -i Identity Server 4 templates. And this shows a list of the install templates and the ones I can use to create various projects within .NET. So once I have that, I'm going to change into the directory where I'm going to create this project. And then once I'm in that directory, I can run the command to create a new instance of Identity Server 4. And the command I'm going to run is .NET new IS4 inmem. So this will create me an Identity Server 4 with the clients and the users, etc., held in memory. So a very simple implementation of Identity Server 4. Once I've created that project, I can now load it into JetBrains Rider. And I've done that just by creating an empty solution and then adding the project to that solution. And then before we write any code, we need to make some upgrades to this project. So the first thing to do is to make sure the project is .NET Core 3.1. So if we right click and do properties, and we see that, that it is. I then want to make sure all the NuGet packages are up to date. So again, right click, manage NuGet packages, and then ask some updates. So let's run those. The project will need to use a certificate and we'll use the same one that we used last time. So I just need to make sure that's copied into the project. And now that the project view is refreshed, we can see the certificate there. And then again, like the previous walkthrough, I need to add the RSK SAML component. So inside the NuGet window, if I search for RSK Identity Server 4.saml, select that and click on add and say yes. And now that's in place. So now that we have the correct packages in place, we can now start updating the code. And the first place I want to go is config.cs. So this is where we define our in-memory database. So we set up the identity resources, the API resources, and the clients that we can use in this version of Identity Server. So the first thing I want to do here is add a new client. So in the client section, we specify our SAML client. It has a client ID, we have a name, and we have some allowed scopes. I also in here need to add a new section, and that's going to be the list of service providers that this instance of Identity Server supports. So we have a service provider collection, and remember, this is just an in-memory version here. So normally this would be held in a database. So we provide an enumerable of service provider. And each service provider has an entity ID. And this is the ID that the client's going to use to connect to us and specifies as well the service provider endpoints that the SAML responses and SAML assertions will be sent to. In this case, we're running on localhost 5002. And if you saw the previous walkthrough, you'll know that that's where our service provider lives on localhost 5002. So now that we have our database in place, I can configure the code. So if we go to startup CS, then in here, initially, I need to add three things. I need to add the signing credential, which is the certificate we just added to the project. I need to add the list of service providers that we support. And that's what we just configured in our config. And finally, I need to add the SAML plugin. And again, if you'd seen the previous walkthrough, this is similar to what we did there. So I add SAML plugin, I have a license. So we have a licensee and a license key, and I'm specifying that I don't want authentication requests signed. And again, you can get this license from www.identityserver.com and just follow the links to the SAML plugin. I also need to make sure that we delete the add developer signing credential. And then finally, in the configure section, we need to tell Identity Server to make use of the SAML plugin. So we add app.useIdentityServer SAML plugin. And now we're good to go. So from here, we can run Identity Server, and this is running on localhost 5000. I can run an instance of my service provider, and that's running on localhost 5002. So as in the previous walkthrough, if from here, I go to slash home slash details, 
I get the login page. And notice this is provided on localhost 5000. From here, I can type in my username and my password, click on login, and sure enough, I get sent back to the service provider. I'm now properly authenticated. So as you can see, making a SAML identity provider using the rock solid knowledge component is relatively straightforward inside Identity Server 4.